What's up YouTube, Elsa SDI here. I got a lot of requests in the comment section of my other videos to talk about the VDC SI drive and DCCD systems from Subaru. So, you know, I'd like to help you out. So let's talk about those systems and dispel some of the myths and talk about what they're really useful for. Let's check it out. All right, the first thing we're gonna look at is here, just behind the shifter in the center console part of the car. Now here we have our SI drive system, an SI drive knob, as well as our driver center control differential controls just below it. All right, let's talk about this SI drive system and what it does. So again, the SI drive system is integrated into the engine control module or ECM, and it enables three distinct different modes for the vehicle in terms of performance. And it does that by regulating the electronic control module or ECM and fine tuning the electronic throttle control system. So again, you have three modes. You have intelligent, you have sport sharp and sport. And these are all very distinctly different for different types of situations. Intelligent mode is something that's great for if you're commuting in the city, you're in heavy traffic, it's going to reduce throttle response, so it's going to give you a very much more traveled pedal feel in terms of getting the throttle up. Um, it's also going to help you save a little bit of gas, um, and it's also great for low traction surface driving um, and coupling with the all-wheel drive system. So intelligent, everyday city commuting, kind of boring, I think a lot of STI owners think intelligent mode is. now. Sport mode, it provides a quicker throttle response or pedal feel. Um, it gives you more powerful and linear acceleration, uh, and it's great for just kind of everyday sporty driving, getting on it here and there. And then you have sport sharp mode. You want to flick to the right for that guy. Sport Sharp is going to give you a very touchy throttle. It's going to give you the maximum amount of full boost up on the top end. Sport Sharp is great if you're in the mountains taking some twisties. If you're on the track, Sport Sharp is where you want to be. Now again, when you're changing these modes, you will feel the car jerk. You will feel that difference as the ECM changes um, its settings, the way the throttle changes, you're going to feel it. You can make these changes when you're driving. You do not have to be stopped. To make these changes, simply push in for intelligent mode, to the left for sport mode, to the right for sport sharp. Um, and that's how you control SI drive. Again, you will feel it in the butt feel of the seat as you change this. Um, I typically drive in sport mode, sometimes in intelligence mode and heavy traffic. And of course, when I get in the mountains, I'm all about that sport sharp. I mean, it's an insane throttle response. It's a straight up power band. It's, it's amazing. If you're really gonna be taking some corners with the track, sport sharp is where you wanna be. And next, we're gonna talk about probably one of the most misunderstood things on this vehicle and that is the DCCD system or driver center control differential which is controlled right here in this silver part of the panel you have a plus minus switch with a rocker left and I mean up and down excuse me and then an auto manual button a lot of people think this system actually controls the power to the back of the car versus the front that's not actually how it works um, again often misunderstood now let me just say to be honest in most situations 90% of the stuff out there you need to keep it in auto and choose between auto plus and auto minus and just straight up auto there's no reason hardly ever that you should be in there in manual locking it up or changing the uh, lockup in a manual mode um, very rare instances probably unless you're off like doing autocross in the dirt something like that again auto plus auto minus or straight up auto is going to be where you want to be all right, so what about those DCCD settings? What are they all about? All right, auto. Auto is a pretty easy one to talk about. Basically, the car is gonna do all the work for you. It's electronically managed, um, continuously variable transfer clutch that I can vary the torque res ratio in response to driving and road conditions. So, it's the best all around performance for most drivers in most circumstances. It's just straight up auto, which you see here on the screen. The system determines the ideal power um, based on acceleration, deacceleration, steering angle, cornering force, wheel slippage. Basically, the car sensors are sensing how you're driving and making decisions for you based on that. Again, that's going to be mostly great in almost every situation. But what about auto minus? Auto minus is going to shift the torque bias to the rear and reduces the center limited slip differential lock. So you're going to be reducing the lockup um, in the diff which allows 40 driving on high traction surfaces. So if you're on a nice 
smooth road with a lot of traction and you just want a little bit better grip, some more sport performance out of the car in terms of handling, you want to go auto minus. Again, nice tires, nice surface. You want a little pep, a little bit of go. Auto minus is where you want to be. Now again, if you're not on the best of surfaces and you're driving on something slick, maybe gravel, snow, uh, rainy road, something like that, you're going to want to go to Auto Plus. Auto Plus is great for driving on slippery surfaces as it increases the lockup in the diff. So again, something where you might lose traction given your conditions, you want to go Auto Plus. If you're on a nice smooth track, a nice road with plenty of traction, warm weather, then you want to slip it back and go to auto minus. Again, this is the majority where people should stay. They should not worry about going into manual as fun as it can be and be like, oh, I can play with the switch, yay. Don't do it. Um, the car between plus, minus, and full auto is going to be where 95% of people are probably going to feel comfortable and that's all they're going to need. Next, we're going to talk about the dreaded manual control. I'm even scared of talking about this because I don't want people messing with it because honestly, unless you fully understand it and have a use for it, you really shouldn't be touching it um, because I said you can definitely do some damage to your drivetrain. So I'm going to push manual down here in the center console. You'll see that I can now see C diff on the left hand side of my display screen. You'll notice that I have it fully pushed to the back on the C diff. That means again, I have as much as I can in terms of reduced lockup to send more power to the rear wheels when applicable. Most people um, like that setting, like, like that have that rear wheel drive bias, which is up to about 59% they can send to the back. Um, the one thing you should never, ever, ever, ever do when you're on a dry surface with high traction, never go manual control and fully lock it where you can see lock on your screen. Don't do that, bad idea. Do not drive hard with lock on on a dry high grip surface. This is for dirt, snow, gravel, something like that. Otherwise, you're gonna tear up your drivetrain. Don't even go to lock again. I, I wouldn't even mess with it. Again, unless you're on an off-road type of surface. Again, so this is a little bit higher lockup. So this is gonna give me a little bit more bias toward the front of the car in terms of power, and I can reduce it back and give it a more rear wheel drive bias. But again, you can do the same thing by going auto minus instead of going full manual mode. Because again, if you're not sure how all this works, how it affects your drivetrain, what surface you're on, and you start messing in manual mode, yes, again, you can definitely do some damage to your drivetrain. So that's why I'm saying most people just stick with auto plus, auto minus, or full auto. Um, you're still gonna notice a difference. And if you really wanna get in here, take some mountain roads. Again, do not lock this up. But if you're out taking some turns, just change this around and feel how the car responds if you really wanna try it. Um, you might find a setting that you like in here. Again, key thing, do not lock it up on a dry, high grip surface. Bad idea. Um, so again, you wanna stick to mostly auto. It's gonna be just fine. The car is gonna do all the thinking for you. It's a great all wheel drive system. That's what Subaru is known for. Again, if you're looking for a little more quicker acceleration, a little more ump, uh, some a little bit, it's gonna help you knock some of the understeer off the car, make it feel a little bit looser, dig harder into those corners. Auto minus is where you wanna be. Again, if you're on a slippery surface, a wet road, it's raining, snow, gravel, stuff like that, and you want a little bit more grip and emphasize traction, auto plus is where you wanna be. Now, let's talk about VDC, or Vehicle Dynamics Control. All right, now we're talking the VDC system. Another thing that, honestly, a lot of people don't end up touching unless you really want to get into the car and have it be a more raw, kind of manual experience. Um, that for most drivers, they don't even touch it. But again, you're going to find it down here in the left-hand side, uh, just below, I said, your, carbon, your faux carbon fiber panel down here on the left. Um, you'll see a traction control button. This is what you want to mess with. So you have three things down there. The VDC is a default setting. It's optimized basically for daily driving. There's no warning lights. There's nothing on your uh, dash that you're going to be able to see. And it keeps all the controls active for you. ABS, traction control system, and the VDC. Um, however, some people may want to turn those assists or you know computer controlled assists off to make it, again, a little bit more of a raw experience where they're driving. Uh, to do that, this is what you're going to want to do. If you want to actually have a traction setting, so performance-oriented driving conditions, uh, hold this button in for two seconds. Let's go ahead and do that and watch our dash. 
holding it for two seconds, you will see I'm left with just the amber traction control signal off. Uh, let me go ahead and turn it back on. If I just push the button, now I see traction control off and track mode. I know what you're thinking. What is track mode when it's illuminated? Track mode essentially raises the threshold at which the car will intervene with its assists. So again, if you want to push the car, have a little bit more fun, but not as much computer assistance, you want to be in track mode. Most people don't mess with it. I don't think you really need to let the car sensors do what they do, help you out. Um, I don't find it to be intrusive. Some people think it's cheating or it lessens the experience. I don't agree with that. Um, and this is also like something that I feel Leave it on, don't touch it, um, and again, you're not even gonna know the difference. So there you have it, a very quick rundown of Subaru's DCCD system and SI drive. I use it quite a bit. Again, I'm mostly at auto plus, auto minus, and full auto. I don't go into the manual modes a whole lot, but then again, I haven't been in dirt or snow or gravel with this car yet. So it's been a long week of work, a lot of hours this week at work. So I'm gonna go in, start my weekend off, um, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I'm trying to get out more content for you guys. If you have suggestions that you want to see stuff, let me know down in the comments below. Um, I will definitely try to make your videos. You'll see I try to help people out as much as I can that want to know about this car. So again, if you have those, leave those down in the comments below. Don't forget, subscribe, like, and we'll see you again.